Now imagine being a continent with 54 countries, a landmass with more than 1.5 billion people, a region which is one of the largest voting blocs in the United Nations General Assembly, but on critical matters of security wields very little power or say. Now that is Africa for you in 2024. Despite having three non-permanent seats on the UN's Security Council, it seems like Africa's quest for getting more representation within the Council to decide for its internal security matters will take more time. While it has got the backing from the United States for two permanent seats <clears throat> excuse me, on the Council, the US has made it clear that potential new entrants should, be, should not be automatically handed over the veto power, the power to say no to any resolution that is not aligned to one's interests. Now, this has been seen as a big blow to Africa. Africa has hoped to get more representation on matters that are directly related to them at the Council, being a region that currently hosts five out of the 11 UN peacekeeping missions and accounts for 60 to 70 percent of the UNSC's agenda otherwise. Now, the United, Na the United States position has angered Africans and has been described by local media as an insult. Africans question, what is the point of being a permanent member if one cannot even get the veto power? Now, they are sick and tired of the structure and want more than just lip service. Now, what is the permanent membership of the UN Security Council? And why does it matter so much? Let's understand. The UNSC is the most influential arm of the United Nations, which has a total of 193 members. And out of that, just 15 countries are members of the Security Council. Five members out of the 15 are permanent members, meaning that they do not have a defined term. The other 10 are rotating members that have a two-year defined term. Now, the US, Russia, China, the UK and France are five permanent members that have the veto power, but the ten others don't. Now, it means that these five nations have the power to outweigh 188 others on matters of world security. While this structure was made in 1945, when most of the African countries were still under colonial rule, the calls for increasing African representation on the Council have only grown over time. But why is that so? Now, it is a known fact that the UN General Assembly's decisions are practically non-binding on the member states, whereas a decision from the UNSC are legally binding. The Security Council can legally authorize military action in a region or even impose sanctions on a country. Thus, having more representation gives Africa more voice on matters that are directly related to them. Now, African policymakers have repeatedly called for structural reforms to the Security Council. They have wanted these reforms to be aimed at addressing the historic injustices that Africa has faced on the global stage. Leaders, including the South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, have said that it is unjust and unfair to place the fate of the world's security in the hands of a select few. Kenyan President William Ruto has also noted that it's surprising that a 21st century global institution allows five nations to veto the decision of the remaining members. Now, this unjust structure has irked not only Africa, but several other countries across the world. India, Germany, Japan and Brazil have also been demanding for reforms to the UNSC. They have even proposed a reform that would expand the Council to 25 members, with six new permanent members. But are Africa's calls for getting more permanent seats on the UNSC being heard? Now, yes, they have been heard. They have only been heard. In addition to uh, the US, the UK has called for expansion of the UNSC's permanent seats to include Africa's representation in July of 2024. France has also reaffirmed its support for reforming the UNSC. But like the US, France does not support extending the use of veto power. China has also supported Africa's claim to have more permanent representation, but has been cautious on how those reforms take place, given the geopolitical dynamics. Similarly, Russia is also supportive, but has its own unique conditions attached to those reforms. 
Yet amidst the hollow support that the idea of reforms has received, there is also an opposition. The opposition stems from the fact that African countries do not have the economic and political weight to be strong permanent UNSC members. And therefore, their seats, with or without the veto power, would be a waste of space and time. Now this, among many opposing views, has given rise to calls for the abolishment of the veto power. While supporting broader reforms, Sierra Leone's President Julius Madabio said in August that the veto power must be abolished. Now, President Bio had added that if the states wish to retain veto power, they must extend it to all the members. Now, the odds uh, of a substantial reform for the Council currently seem to be very remote, as amending the United Nations Charter requires an affirmative vote by two-thirds of the UN member states. And this also includes the five permanent members who, although have voiced their support for reforms, do not want to curb the influence that they wield. First Post decodes the U.S. election. Explains how America chooses its president. Your primer on the race to the White House. Everything you need to know about how America votes and its global implications. U.S. election explained every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.